Hello everybody, this is Dream Gamer back for round 5 of Group H and we have got this beautiful fight card for you. So you can see our main event, a big game at the bottom between Shin Dominus and Iron Dan. Defeat for Iron Dan will all but eliminate them from the tournament. Defeat for Shin Dominus would leave them on the brink. But before that we have got LP Gozzi versus Black Rider. Gozzi still undefeated in this tournament, looking to keep that going. Then we have Ooh going up against Cudgel Booth. But at first we have got Killer Wolf currently sitting in fifth place. Going up against top of the table Tyrant King. Okie dokie in the red corner for Killer Wolf. We have got the Super Karma Taurus Awaken Mode on one. Victory for Killer Wolf here and he would and he would close the gap to two points on Tyrant King. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, at least three points if Tyrant King gets a losing bonus point, but, you know, we won't go into that much detail. But in the blue corner for Tyrant King, we've got Black T-Rex. A win for a win for Tyrant King would put them at least seven points clear of Killer Wolf, who sit in fifth, which would pretty much be enough to get into the knockout rounds. Well, they'd be all but through. Not officially, but very high chance of them being through. <laughs> Oh, oh wow, that's a crimson flame. Big, big impact right off the right from the off from Tyrant King. I mean this black T-Rex hits so so hard. Oh no, he flicks the oh, damn it, no! <laughs> I clicked paper instead of scissors. One's gonna lose half its health anyway, so yeah. I didn't do too much damage. Right, here we go. Oh, that's a tie. Ooh, and Carnotaurus gets the hit. The awakened hit. It, yeah, it's not a great hit though, because it's got type disadvantage. And Rock is not really Carnotaurus' strongest move. So it's a hit, but it wasn't a great one. Boom. Hi. It's another tie. Well, somehow, the freaking Garnotaurus has put Killer Wolf in the lead. Probably because of my screw up at the start with the Crimson Flame. Right, coming in next for Tyrant King, we have got Super Eel Karkiria. Wait your mode on three. Surprised that the Carnotaurus is still well, they should be dead, really. <laughs> That's a tie, and okay, there we go. Finally, the Carnotaurus goes down. But if you kill a wolf, you probably take that. Not too far behind, and well, you're ahead by a sliver. Right, coming in next for Killer Wolf, we've got Ampelosaurus. Now, Ampelosaurus is gonna have to do some work here. It's got the type advantage over the Eel Carcaria. We have to say, a good start from Killer Wolf. Even if I did botch the Crimson Flame. Oh, that's a crit. Big shot from Ampelosaurus. Right, that's once. Okay, there's a hit from Yokarkiria. Twice. And that's a crit from the Okarkaria. Shall we see some Flare Sword? Okay, Aqua Vortex has been triggered. That could be a crucial Aqua Vortex, actually. Because it is awakening time for the Eokarkaria. And that Aqua Vortex means that Tyrant King has to get an outright hit to do damage. Because Aqua Vortex can attack during a turn. So this could be a big Aqua Vortex from uh, Killer Wolf. Oh, but he gets the hit anyway. Tyrant King gets the hit. Down goes Ampelosaurus. It was a slow start, but Tyrant King in the lead now. Coming in third for Killer Wolf, we've got Packy Rhinosaurus. Mm -hmm. bam, bam, bam. 
Now, don't underestimate the Pachyrhinosaurus. It does hit really hard, particularly that crest. So Tyrant King's going to have to be careful. But one thing I will say is that Tyrant King does have Ankylosaurus in third. So he will get type advantage over the Pachyrhinosaurus. But it's Eocarcaria landing the hits now. That's another crest. Okay, that's a tie. I forgot if the Eocarcaria has heat corruption. I think it does. Wait, no, it doesn't. Oh, okay. Eocarcaria going down. Pachyrhinosaurus finishing it off eventually, but it did take some damage, which is not good for Killer Wolf. Okie dokie. Coming in third for Tyrant King. We've got Ankylosaurus. Now again, it has type advantage, but one guy I'm mounting will end this match. Provided I don't screw it up. <laughs> oh, that's a crit. Killer Wolf coming back into this with hits. That's a big lightning spear. And despite the type disadvantage, it's still going to do a lot of damage. Respectable. Respectable from Patty Rhinosaurus. Oh, that's another lightning spear. And that's going to put Ta Killer Wolf back in the lead. Oh, look at that. One tile duet. Can Killer Wolf get this win? Yes, he can. Okay, Tyrant King will get a losing bonus point. But look at this from Patty Rhinosaurus. Getting the Thunder Bazooka. Bazooka and Ankylosaurus into the floor. And getting the win for Killer Wolf. Which could be a crucial win in this group. And it does close the gap on Tyrant King at the top. And it's nice to know that the botching of Crimson Flame didn't really matter in the end. Because Killer Wolf was going to win anyway. And Tyrant King got the losing bonus point anyway. So... All's well and ends well. Right, on to our next match. Okie dokie, in the red corner for Ur. We got the Blitz type Spinosaurus. Ur enjoying a better tournament than they did last year. And a win for them would put them in the top four. Uh, what field is this? Dirt Plains. Okay, so Ur will also get terrain advantage in this matchup, courtesy of the Orinoceratops. Right, in the blue corner for Cuddle Booth, we have got Megalosaurus. Cuddle Booth, well, they need a win to close our gap on the top four to keep pace with them. <laughs> hmm, the good thing about this Blitz Spino is that because it'll go for the two crits, it'll stop Megalosaurus getting his crit. Ooh, but Megalosaurus does get the first hit. Right, that's one. Oh, but Spino gets the crit that time. A light recovery to come as well. This is going to do a big amount of damage to the Megalosaurus. Oh, jeez, look at that! Massive hit from... Ugh. Going for it again. And getting it again. And just like that, Megalosaurus going down. Um, okay. Coming in next for Cudgel Booth, we've got Alpha Acrocanthosaurus. Now, the good thing for Cudgel Booth is that this thing doesn't have any fire moves, so... Got no type disadvantages to worry about, but does need to worry about that crit from the Spino, because it's doing some serious damage. Oh, that's another hit from the Spino. This has been a really good start from Ur. Oh, there's a, there's a crit from the Alpha Acro. It's an Alpha Dice. Needed this hit. Okay, that's a free, but the more important thing, stopping our Water Sword. Because that would have done massive damage. Oh, here comes a uh, ACT rocket. Now, the damage of this is set in stone. 
into it. We'll do some good damage to the spine. Nope. Kajobu finally getting some hits in this match. Actually, I say that. I think the hits have been pretty even. It's just that Spino's hits have been crits. Oh, well, here's another hit to add up. Light recovery to come as well. Ooh, extending their lead. Will the rocket come down? No. Hmm, interesting. Oh, well, there's a hit from Alpha Apple. Now, because the rocket is already in effect, it'll be a normal hit like so. Ah, here it comes. Badoosh. Oh, look at that. Actually, is there a, a specific trigger for the rocket to come down? I wouldn't... I actually don't know. Well, rocket or not, is still a good start. Good start from... Uh, Okay, that banana surprise is going to finish off the Spino, finally. But with the terrain advantage that Ur's going to get with the Orinoceratops, the Alpha Acro is still going to go down. And speaking of Orinoceratops, here it is. <laughs> Done more in one match than mine has throughout the entire tournament. Absurd. Dun 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 dun. But there's still time for some redemption. Right, let's get the terrain advantage over with. Thunder Bazooka's gonna finish off the Alpha Acro and give Ur a 2 1 lead. Right, coming in third for Cuddle Booth, we have got Ceratosaurus, the little ratty thing. Well, it's going to have to perform a very good. It's going to have to put in a very good performance here if Cudgel Booth is going to get something out of this match. Because Ur has been pretty dominant. And as for Ur, can the Rhinoceratops get him a big bonus point win? Ooh, okay, that's a much needed crit. Hi. Ooh, uh, getting another hit on the board. Now, Rhinoceratops doesn't have the hardest hitting moves, so it's more of a chipper. And Ceratosaurus does hit harder here, and that's a big Mayfly, and that's going to do some damage. Um, I can't remember if this is heroic type or not. Well, we'll find out now in a minute. I think it is. Because the Rhinoceratops is down. Oh, you know, coming in third, four. Ooh, we've got Armatus. Well, their lead has been cut down yet. The Ceratosaurus is definitely getting some hits in this match. That's for certain. And I'd still say it probably is the harder hitting of the two diamonds here. Ooh, that's a crit though. That's a two and four. Two and four a dive. Ooh, douche. And look at that. Ooh, on the brink of the win. And yep, yeah, yeah, there it is. It's Ooh's victory. The Ceratosaurus may have denied them the bonus point victory, but they weren't going to deny him the victory. Yet. A normal victory. And it is three points for Ooh. And Cudgel Booth, well. It's a damaging defeat that does set them back. And it probably means... Well, it means that they will have to win their next two matches to have any hope of getting out of this group. But for U, that win puts them in a really good position in this group. Right, on to our third match. Right then, in the red corner for El Gozzi, we have got Terry. And this is a good field for Gozzi. Super Fairy will have terrain advantage in this matchup. And Gozzi having a very odd tournament so far. Even though they're one of the few unbeaten teams so far, they, you know, they haven't been as convincing as the other teams that have been strong. Right, in the blue corner for Black Rider, we have got Megaraptor. Black Rider enjoying a very good tournament as well, especially compared to last year where they were 
for a unique mech. And with Tyrant King's defeat in the first match, top spot is up for grabs for these two. And a win for either of these guys would pretty much all but secure a spot in the last 32. So plenty to play for you. Oh, Terry gets the first hit in the match. That's a defense boost activating as well. Um, we haven't seen too much of Terry either. It's usually died pretty quick. Dino Illusion activating there from the Meg. Okay, there goes the Dino Illusion. And apparently it stops the Fence Boots activating as well. <laughs> it's a dangerous game, guys. They're going for Rock. Megaraptor's crit does hit really hard. Well, we're about to find out how hard it hits. Boosh! Big hit from Black Rider incoming. And yeah, that was a dangerous game to play there from Terry. And to make matters worse, no death fire either. And there's another hit from the Mega Raptor. And that is going to put Black Rider 1 0 up. Well, I think it will. <laughs> yeah. Despite the defense boost. Right, coming in next for Elfie Dozzy, we got the Ceratosaurus, Super Ceratosaurus. Now, this thing has been really impressive in this tournament. It was very effective in the last matchup against Iron Dan. Dozzy will need it to be effective here. Because the Mega Raptor does have a good lead here. Like I said, that crit hits really hard. Tie. There's a hit from Serapasaurus. Now, the, the interesting thing is to have the Awakening Mode on 4 is an interesting choice because the odds are your dinosaur may not survive to get to that Awakened hit. Well, it won't survive with that, but there's the Dino Stuffer. That could be a big Dino Stuffer. Gonna stop that crit. That Net Crusher would have done a lot of damage. It's twice. Oh, that Venom. Actually, no, I think this dude has Archaeotrix Charm, doesn't it? So this Venom Fang is going to come in, is going to do damage, but the Archaeotrix Charm is going to get rid of the poison. So it's a good hit from Cudgel Booth. But, Gozzy has the counter. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't. Oh, I, 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 I'm losing my head, I think. <laughs> okay, it is a good hit from Cudgel Booth. One more hit for the Awaken Mode from Ceratosaurus. Can it survive? Another tie. The tie, the poison is wearing down Ceratosaurus. Oh, it's not going to... Okay, I don't know. Oh, it does for the skin of its teeth. It does get a chance for an Awakened hit. And gets it. And the recovery as well, which could be interesting. I mean, not really. It'll get rid of the poison, but Serato's going to lose half his health anyway. Attack boost activated during the Awaken mode. Remember, when the dinosaur is awakened, its technique doubles. So the attack boost is even greater because of that double technique. So do bear that in mind. Right, coming in next for Black Rider, we've got Shunasaurus. Black Rider still has a big lead in this match. But if Gozzi can get a big hit from the Ceratosaurus of our big attack buff. He can wipe that lead out quickly. So it's an interesting crossroads here. Can Gozzi get a big hit here? He can. And yeah, look at this. Okay, that's not as much as I was expecting. Oh, that's going to do damage though. That's a crit. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, Gozzi back in this match. And that's a tie. That's Ocean Panic. A big Ocean Panic from Black Rider. That's going to put him back in the lead. That's going to be curtains for Ceratosaurus. However, Therizinosaurus does come in next with terrain advantage. So Gozzi will get the next hit, which will finish off Shunosaurus. So with everything said and done, we are all square. 
Right, coming in third for Gozzi, we've got Super Fairies and Asaurus. Again, a weaker mood on four. I think this is the one that's got Archaeopteryx charm. <laughs> for some reason, I thought Ceratosaurus had it. Right, so there's the uh, hit that's going to be lethal for Shunosaurus. Ah, this is interesting. Coming in third for a Black Rider, we've got a Black T-Rex. Well, I'm sure we've all seen um, Gauzy's armoured Black T-Rex in Jurassic World Evolution. But he could be tasting defeat courtesy of a Black T-Rex. Let's see how this plays out. Ooh, is a crit! Good shot there from the very Xenosaurus. Right, that's once. Another hit coming from Ferrazinosaurus. And well, there's the losing bonus point secured. Ooh, but Black T Rex not done yet. Remember, it could get a death fire off. Okay, that's twice. So do bear that in mind. Oh, it's a Magma Blaster! Is that going to be lethal? I think it will be because, it bla again, Black T Rex hits so, so hard. I think that's going to be it. Oh, that's done it! The big hits from the Black T-Rex making the difference. And it is Black Rider's victory. Now, as I said, Gauzy will get a losing bonus point, but they are tasting defeat for the first time in this tournament. Right then, on to our main event of this session. And this is a big one, given the previous results in this video. Ooh, the Colosseum. A venue fitting for such a clash of such significance. Right, in the red corner, for Shin Dominance, we have got Zuni Ceratops, the purple sheep of the lightning dinosaurs. I love this thing. <laughs> Absolutely love it. But in the blue corner, for Iron Dam, we've got Stegosaurus. Iron Dam is still searching for their first win in this tournament. Um, yeah, it didn't, it's not going as well for them this year compared to last year, where they actually, for me, had probably their best showing last year. And yes, if they do lose here, then they will be out at the group stage. So it is win or bust for Iron Dam. And if they want this win, this Stegosaurus has to perform. Against a full team of lightning types. That Stegosaurus is key. And yeah, look at that. Oh, electric charge coming in here, so that's going to increase the damage. In this scenario, you feel like Iron Dam will only need like two, three hits. But Shin Dominus will need about over a double that. Okay, that triggers the Quake Saber. Oh, that's a big Quake Saber. Massive hit incoming. This is this is gonna do some damage. That is gonna shake the internals of that Zuni Ceratops. Oh my goodness, it killed it! Wow, what a hit from Iron Dan. That was like quake shaking hell. <laughs> right, um, coming in for Shin Dominus next, we got Anki Ceratops. Right, tell you what, if Iron Dan can somehow get three quakes, another two quake sabers off, they could win 3 0 yeah. I mean, I'm not joking. Stegosaurus, man, hits so hard. Okay, there's a hit from Shin Dominus, a bit shaken after that Quake Saber. Now, this Anti-Ceratops is equipped better to deal with Earth types, I will say that. Better than the Zuni Ceratops was. But if you're Iron Dan, that's exactly what you wanted. A technique boost that's going to increase the likelihood of Earth Barrier. But we don't see it. Okay, there's another hit. Okay, there's the Earth Barrier. Surely it had to activate. That's going to help as well. Another hit from... Well, I said the Stegosaurus had to perform if Iron Dan was going to win. And so far, you have to say, it is performing. And that is going to put Iron Dan 2-0 up. 
Shin Dominus absolutely rattled by that monster Quake Saber at the start. Right, coming in third for Shin Dominus, we've got Starkosaurus. A defeat here for Shin Dominus would leave them on the brink of elimination. But this situation is not as bad as Iron Dance. So they would still have an outside chance, but it would be a slim one. Well, it's got Earth Barrier in effect as well. This could be huge for Iron Dance. Another hit! Well, are, are they going to get the free now? Ooh, okay, a much needed crit from the Starachosaurus. That does remove the Earth Barrier. Shin Dominus needed that, and that triggers the Thunder Driver as well. Oh, the Stegosaurus getting back on top with the hits. Another Earth Barrier is probably going to activate. No! Shin Dominus needs to take advantage of this opening, and he is, and is this going to be a 3-0 victory for Iron Dan? Right when they needed it the most. Oh, it's a tie. Oh, okay. Down goes Stegosaurus. It's not doom and gloom. The Thunder Driver is wasted. Iron Dan still in a commanding position. The Stegosaurus does go down, but let's be honest, it's done his work, hasn't it? Look at that. All Iron Dan needs is a hit for a huge bonus point win. Coming in next one, we got Cacarodontosaurus. Well, they'll kick themselves if they don't get a bonus point win from this position. But we all know what a cunning little mistress the random number generator can be. Ooh, there's another crept. There's a hush of tension. Oh, that's a softening beam. Wow. Shin Dominus finally getting some hits. But has it come too late? This would be costly if they don't... If Iron Dan can't get the bonus point win here. Okay, that's a tie, but... Look at the damage done. Oh, there we go. And there it is. The bonus point win for Iron Dan. They needed this big time. A massive result for them. And they do get it done in the end. And they finally get their first win of the tournament. And it's a win that does get them back in this. It's still an outside shot. But, you know, they're not down and out yet. Right, let's have a look at the uh, table. We can end the session. Wow, Group H is really sh heating up here. We've got Black Rider going top with 14 points. Only four points clear of these two on 10 points. Then we have Tyrant King in second place on 13 points. Mainly because of all the bonus points they've gotten. Then we have LP Gozzi dropping down to third on 12 points. Ooh, and Killer Wolf level on points with 10, but uh, has the head-to-head -head over Killer Wolf. Then we have Iron Dan climbing up to sixth. There's still five points adrift of these two with two to play, so it's still a long shot, but at least they've given themselves a chance. And then Kudjo Booth and Shin Dominus still on four points. Still have an outside chance, but yeah, it's basically win or bust for these three now. And uh, yeah, that's going to end this session here, so I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, ta-ta!